What's good, Raider Nation? I hope you guys are all having a great Sunday. Um, let's get into this, man. Uh, first and foremost, I guess I should have someone just confirm that you guys could 100% hear me. Uh, I'll wait for that confirmation. We'll let some people join in here. Uh, and we're going to jump into this, man. We have a great episode today. We're going to talk a little bit about the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers, and the tight end. So uh, today should be a really good episode. Uh, it is a Sunday in which a lot of people are out taking vacations and, and stuff like that. So I don't expect a lot of people to be here. Uh, maybe we'll get up to 100 people, uh, which is great if you ask me. Um yeah, man, I see all the comments coming in. Uh, you guys can hear me. So I do appreciate you guys confirming. Um, I hope you guys are all having a great weekend. Like, you know, this is a it's a long weekend. It's Memorial Day um, tomorrow. And, you know, you guys should be out there enjoying your day if you guys aren't. I hope it's nice. It's sunny and it's a beautiful day wherever you guys are. Uh, I just got back from vacation myself. Uh, I went to Monterey Bay on Thursday and I came back earlier today. Or was it last night? I came back today. Um, either way, I'm pumped up about this. Um, I want to actually start off with something that's kind of related to wide receivers. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard this report, and let me know if you guys have or if you guys haven't. Uh, but there's a report on social media that the Las Vegas Raiders have expressed the most interest in Julio Jones. Um, I think it was the Raiders and the Titans. So both teams have expressed the most interest among all teams. And that's exciting for me, man. If the reports are true, right? We don't know if it's going to be 100% true. I'm sure it'll eventually be confirmed or denied. June 1st, man, it's literally Tuesday. Uh, most people would agree that Julio Jones is going to be moved on Thursday. I'm sorry, on Tuesday um, or sometime during this week. Uh, an agreement might come today, tonight, tomorrow morning. Um, an agreement might happen because of salary cap purposes. People are waiting uh, there's been other reports that the Raiders, uh, Titans, and then there have been reports that say that the most the Falcons have received is a second round pick offer, and that's the highest compensation they've received. And I'm not surprised about that at all. Um, let's get into some comments, uh, and then we're going to jump right into it. Uh, obviously, if you guys have any uh, comments, uh, you guys can leave them in the chat below, uh, and then hopefully we can bring those on. Um Again, I appreciate everybody that confirmed uh, that you guys could hear me. Valerie said, happy Memorial Weekend. Absolutely. Um, Juan, shout out to you for being a member. Said, Sanji, what up, man? Uh, man, there's some trade packages being brought up for Julio Jones. One can only help. I really, really hope so, man. I really, really, really do hope that the Raiders can get Julio Jones. Uh, you know, I, I did a film study of uh, the Raiders' third down issues, right? And I know it's hard to say the Raiders have third down issues when – um, when you just look at the statistic as a whole, the Raiders are not bad on third downs, right? Like, I think we're the sixth best when it came to the percentages, right? But I do think those stats could be screwed a little bit, right? I, I don't know the numbers on top of my head. But uh, basically, when you look at wins versus losses, in wins, we're like third. In losses, we're like 13th on third down percentage. Uh, when you looked at divisional versus non-divisional opponents, we were terrible against non-divisional opponents. Against divisional opponents, I believe we're like the best on third downs. Versus non-divisional opponents, we're like, I think somewhere in the 20s. Um, so I, I do think when you look at like third down percentages, you do have to look at every single situation instead of just looking at it as a whole, right? Uh, against the Dolphins specifically, we did not convert one third down. Right? We're like 0 for 11 or something in, on third down specifically. Um, so yeah, man. But my point is, is when I was watching – tape to do that film study the thing that kept sticking out to me over and over and over again is we didn't have a true third down guy right like i know we have third and renfro and that's great and all uh but renfro is not julio jones right like if we could give Derek carr julio jones if we can give him that type of talent could you imagine how great this offense could be like we'd be almost unstoppable you have waller on one end julio jones on the other henry ruggs in the middle uh renfro maybe playing the opposite slot uh, Brian Edwards would come in and out. Our offense would be almost unstoppable. And here's the thing, right? I, I know we have issues on the defensive side of the ball, but at this point, we've already invested as much as we possibly could on the defensive side of the ball. Like, we're not going to go out and spend a second round pick for any player on defense. At this point, we just need the defensive guys to get coached and for those guys to improve. But on the offense side of the ball, our offense is not there yet. Like, it's very clear when you watch film that the offense still lacks. 
right? And I bring all this up because we're going to get into the offense today, specifically quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, and tight ends. Uh, but a guy like Julio Jones would take this offense to the next level, and that is what the Raiders are missing, and I think that is what the Raiders need to do. Um, I know uh, Raiders 7528 said those reports are false. Um, I do kind of feel like they could be. Um, again, we'll obviously find out if they are or if they aren't. Uh, once the trade happens, man, it's just a matter of trying – uh, of of it happening the trade uh, johnny said damn bro i'm from the monterey bay area sick to know you stopped by uh, i go to monterey bay all the time man and, and i saw a couple of raider fans out there so huge shout out to all the raider fans that were there uh let's let's just jump into this man let's just jump right into this um i want to actually first start and we're not going to start with quarterbacks right we'll build the into the quarterbacks we'll kind of start with uh wide receivers first because i think this is the raiders biggest issue on offense uh some people might say it's it's not that big of a deal uh but when i was watching film to me over and over and over again it was an issue and here's the thing right uh again don't look at the offense in whole uh, and say well we're the 10th best offense um look at the offense in specific situations right look at the offense when it came to red zone when it came to third and short when it came to third and long Right, look at all these different situations and look at the offense in each of these different scenarios. Um, and you'll really see why we need a, a better wide receiver, a true number one wide receiver. Um, and here's the thing, right? I know most people are going to say, well, Brian Edwards should be that guy. And I would love for Brian Edwards to be the guy. But do you guys really want to go into this season with a young second year player in Brian Edwards and just assume he'll be the guy and just kind of put all your eggs in that one basket? Um, or would you rather have a guy like Julio Jones, a guy you know is a beast, a guy who's a stud? Personally, I would rather go with a guy like Julio Jones, and I would take him at this at this point of his career, at 32. I would trade a second-round pick. I would trade a second and a fourth if that's what it took, right? I get a guy like Julio. Um, when you look at our receivers, right, going into this year, I think we're going to continue to struggle in the red zone. Uh, just as we did last year, right? Last year, uh, we ha already had Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards and Zay Jones uh, from the receiver perspective and Hunter Renfro as well. And we still struggled. This year, we brought in John Brown and Willie Sneed as wide receivers. Um, but none of these guys are like big wide receivers. I know Brian Edwards is going to go into his second year and that should help a ton. But Henry Ruggs is not a red zone wide receiver. Like he doesn't provide much. Uh, Ruggs, his biggest issue when it comes to playing receiver, uh, A is the fact that he's not a good route runner, not, not a great route runner. He's, he's an okay route runner. Um, but at times he was bad last year, right? When wide receivers would press him, um, you know, maybe like six, seven yards downfield, it would really impact his routes. At the same time, um, you have a guy like Hunter Renfro, and there's nothing wrong with Renfro, but he's just not a red zone guy. And at the same time, when you double Waller, it makes it so hard for us to score in the red zone, right? Again, we struggled in the red zone. And I think that's going to be our biggest issue this year. And you got to keep in mind, our O-line is not as good as it was last year. So it's just going to make it that much harder. Um, so again, when it comes to wide receivers, you look at our receivers, who's going to be the red zone guy? Let me know what you guys think the red zone guy is going to be, right? Assuming we don't get anyone else, assuming our receivers are who they are. I don't want us to struggle in the red zone again. And when you look at our tight ends, and we'll kind of just get into receivers and tight ends together, um, Darren Waller doesn't add much, right? Because you can double team one guy. And I don't see guys like Renfro beating press man coverage that often. And Renfro is not going to beat press man coverage. When you commit a guy to Renfro, he doesn't beat a lot of people. Renfro is a guy, if you line up in zone, he'll get wide open. Like, you know, he can create that separation. Uh, but when it came to press coverage, you know, I look at the Falcons game, the Dolphins game, we struggled in the red zone, right? Like the Falcons game, I can't think of how many times we just did not get points. Uh, the Dolphins game, 0 for 10 on third downs. Uh, I think we're in the red zone like five or six times. We just did not score. And again, I think the Raiders need to 100% get a receiver. Um, tight ends, I think we're great. I think we have two great tight ends. You know, Darren Waller's does top two top three tight end in the nfl i think foster moreau could be a great tight end you know believe it or not i said this maybe two or three months ago that i believe foster moreau could potentially have a thousand yards right uh, and i'm not saying he'd have a thousand yards with both him and waller in together at the same time 
Uh, but let's say Waller were to get hurt, right, or Waller missed five games this year, I think Foster Moreau can step in and obviously not have the same, you know, type of impact as Waller, obviously not. But uh, I, I don't think the drop-off between uh, Foster Moreau and Waller is that big. I, I think Foster Moreau, I think he's going to have 600 yards if, if Waller plays the whole entire season. I think he'll still have 600 yards and he'll have more touchdowns, right? Um, I don't remember exactly how many touchdowns Foster Moreau had his rookie year, but he had like four or five or six touchdowns. Like he had a ton of touchdowns. Um, and I feel like we need that red zone threat. And I hope that's going to be him um, this season, right? Because last year we had Jason Witten to play a lot. And Witten was bad. Right? Witten did not get open. He did not beat coverage that often. Uh, but we really need a guy, not from just the wide receiver position, but even the tight ends. I was watching the Miami Dolphins game. And we lined up uh, Darren Waller on the outside on one side of the field multiple times, put Derek Carr in shotgun multiple times, uh, and put two or three receivers to the right of the field. Maybe we had Jason Witten come in. Uh, and we struggled, right? Like over and over and over. And we struggled to get Darren Waller the ball in those situations because they would just bracket him. Once you bracket Darren Waller, Carr's a smart guy. He's not going to take an unnecessary risk by trying to fit the ball in when, when there's two guys. Just statistically looking at it, right? Looking at it from a math perspective, if you double one guy, chances are another guy's gonna get open on the other side of the field. But the thing is, is those receivers on the other side of the field, the second tight end, sometimes it'd be Jason Winton, they just couldn't beat people. They couldn't beat people off the line of scrimmage. And I think that really impacted the Raiders. Again, I really want what you guys think. Let's look at some of the comments that you guys have been uh have been putting in. Um you know, again, I appreciate every single one of you guys that has tuned in. I did not think 155 of you guys would already be here. Shout out to all of you guys, man. If you guys can hit that thumbs up button, it really does help me a ton. Um, I know it's Memorial Day weekend and a lot of people are out spending time with their families. A uh, long weekend, so people might be out and, you know, vacationing or, or whatever it, it could be. Um, Jimmy C said, who talking bad on car? I just got here. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, you know, I, I do think that Derek can get it done this year, but I do think the Raiders need to give him another wide receiver. I'm not sold on these wide receivers. Uh Jesse Roto said facts. Um Juan said if Julio comes to the Raiders, eight mint could be uh would be cold any could would be cold. Could anyway, I'm not 100% what you mean. Therefore, a second and eight men would be perfect. Uh, I think you meant eight men would be cut, anyways. I agree, man. Uh, the reports are that uh, the Falcons are interested in Marcel Aitman, which I don't know why they're interested in Aitman. Uh, I could understand why they might want like a guy like Henry Ruggs, uh, even if they wanted Brian Edwards. Uh, assuming that uh, we don't have to give them a second and Brian Edwards, assuming we give them someone like Brian Edwards and maybe like a fifth. Uh, would you guys be open to that? I'd probably be open to that. Uh, I, I do like Brian Edwards a ton, uh, but Julio Jones is different. Julio Jones, you know, I don't know what Brian Edwards could develop into, uh, but chances are what we can get out of Julio Jones for the next five seasons, chances are Brian Edwards will never be that, right? Chances are, right? Because we've seen hundreds of wide receivers come in, and there's only one Julio Jones, right? Um, first Super Chat of the day comes from Christian L. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate the comment, man. You said, Senji, I just wanted to show my appreciation for you and your work. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. You know, um, this past month, I feel like I put out so much content. Uh, but at the same time, I've seen the uh, the comments from all you guys. And it's really showing that you guys are enjoying uh, the videos, right? So, again, I really appreciate every single one of you guys. And I appreciate the comments, right? It could be the simplest thing as of... You know, things you don't agree with me, things you disagree with, uh, with what I say. I appreciate all of it, man. I really do. And I appreciate the super chat. So thank you a ton, Christian. Um, yeah, Kevin, uh, you're, you're saying uh, the Falcons are interested in eight, man. I can't buy that. And that's the thing, right? That's that's why it, it doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Uh, why would you be interested in Marcel Aitman? There's so many good players that the Raiders could potentially give you, right? Even guys on the in the secondary that the Raiders could potentially give you. Why would you be interested in Marcel Aitman, right? Um, it doesn't make a ton of sense. He's like our fourth or fifth wide receiver. Um, it's interesting, right? Because there is a chance that Aitman will ultimately be cut. Chances are he's not going to be on the rosters. So why would the Falcons want a guy like Aitman? That does not make sense. 
Um, but let's let's discuss our depth a little bit in more detail. Uh, how many wide receivers do you guys think make the Raiders active roster? Um, five or six wide receivers, potentially seven. I don't think seven. I think that's pushing it. But if there's six wide receivers to make it, who are the six? Uh, John Brown, Henry Ruggs, Hunter Renfro, and Brian Edwards. Those four guys will 100% make the roster. That leaves two spots, right? So you got guys like um, maybe Zay Jones, Willie Sneed. A lot of people are saying should be on the active roster. So if you throw Willie Sneed in there, so then you got Hunter Renfro, John Brown, Henry Ruggs, Willie Sneed, uh, Brian Edwards. That's five guys. There's probably one or two more spots left. Who's left? You have Zay Jones, Marcel Aitman, uh, Dylan Stoner potentially. Um, Keelan Doss, who's going to get cut? Who's going to make the roster? I, I think Keelan Doss and Marcel, I mean, I think those guys are fighting for even to make the practice squad this year. Uh, Dylan Stoner, I think, is going to push to to make the active roster at the worst case scenario. I think he's a practice squad guy. I know there were reports earlier that Dylan Stoner is impressing at OTAs. Um, there's more than just impressing at OTAs, right? Like uh, people were leaving comments like, just because Dylan Stoner wasn't pressing out OT additional pads and there's none of that other stuff, which is true, but you still line up against another guy and you still run routes, right? And it might not be 100% from the defensive side of the ball. At the same time, you got to pick up the offense. There are guys that will struggle picking up the language and the verbiage. And at the other time, there's guys that will pick it up quicker than other guys. So those things all matter when it comes to OTAs. Um, let's just get into a couple more comments. Uh, so some people are saying six wide receivers. Some are saying five. Um, I, I guess I, I would probably say six wide receivers on the active roster, a practice squad. I'm not hundred percent sure how many practice squad guys you can keep. Um, Johnny press says rugs, Edwards, Renfro, Zay Brown and Sneed. So you're saying there's going to be six guys. I think those are the six, uh, which is who's going to make the, the practice squad, right? I think you get like 10 spots on the practice squad. Uh, so, Who's going to get cut? Who's going to be on the practice squad? Is Aitman going to be on the practice squad? Keely Doss, Dylan Stoner. I think you get at most two wide receivers, even on the practice squad. It's going to be a very interesting uh, cut that are going to happen this year because more than ever, I think the Raiders are deeper this season. But I do think that the Raiders receivers still are not that good, right? Uh, in, in situational football. If if it's if you're at the 15 yard line and, and you're driving and you have 85 yards to go, if you're at the 25 yard line and you're driving, you have 75 yards to go. I think our receivers are perfectly fine. Uh, but when you're eight yards away, when you're four yards away, when you're seven yards away from scoring a touchdown, I think our offense struggles and I think it's going to continue to struggle. Um, you know, I uh, read the tape just did a, a film study recently. I think he did his second one. I think he released it yesterday. Um, it's basically the same thing in, in a lot of those plays. Like we just don't have weapons for Derek Carr. We don't have guys that could beat coverage and get open. And I think that really hinders the team. And I think that really hinders our ability to score points. Um, so yeah, man, I, I see a lot of people saying uh, six and I, I see a lot of the comments uh, of, of people saying uh, who they think is going to make the roster. So it's going to be very interesting. I'm very pumped up to kind of see what happens. I'm very pumped up for uh, for preseason, uh, camp, preseason. And then once we get into like that third and final game of the preseason, um, let's jump forward uh, to running backs. And then we'll, we'll, lastly, we'll hit on uh, quarterbacks. Uh, but when it comes to running backs, this is going to be very interesting because we'll keep uh, three running backs and, of course, the fullback. Uh, the fullback will be Alec Ingold, right? There's no way anyone else is going to make the roster over Alec Ingold. I don't even know if we have another uh, fullback on the roster. I don't think we do. Uh, Alec Ingold, in my opinion, is the only uh, fullback we have. Um, but when it comes to running back, we have six running backs right now, and chances are three will make the roster and three will be gone. Um, I want to discuss that, but before we fully get into it, we got a second super chat of the day. This one comes from Steven Trillo. Shout out to you, man, for the four ninety nine super chat. Don't you think Ruggs is like John Ross? I hate to say it, but I think Gruden will be another Chip Kelly, a head coach who should not be a GM. Thoughts? Um, I don't disagree with you, man. Right now, it doesn't look good for John Gruden. Um, but here's the thing, right? John Gruden, if there's one thing he's doing correct, is he has our offense firing. We have the 10th best offense this past year. Uh, so I don't think John Gruden is necessarily uh, a, an issue at this point. At the same time, um, 
I don't like John Gruden calling all the shots. I don't like John Gruden deciding who to cut, who to keep a hundred percent, which I don't think he does, right? I think Gus Bradley has you know his opinions. I think um maybe on the offense side of the ball, he he keeps he gets to decide. When it comes to like drafting players, I don't really know who calls the shots. Is it Mike Mayock? Is it John Gruden? I don't one hundred percent know. Um, but do you do I think Ruggs is like John Ross? I one hundred percent do think that. You know, a lot of people said Henry Ruggs could be the next Harry Kill, but really Henry Ruggs is like John Ross, and that doesn't mean he's a bust at all. I think John Ross was just misused in that system specifically for the Bengals. Um, he's so fast, right? And you can't teach speed. That is true. It is up to the coaching staff to get a guy who's fast the ball. Um, just like Andy Reid made all of Deshaun Jackson, I think John Gruden can do that with Henry Ruggs. Ultimately, it's up to John Gruden to get Henry Ruggs to succeed. Um, I do think he's like John Ross. Again, that doesn't mean anything negative. It just means that we have to get him uh, 100% involved and get him the ball. Uh, I don't think Henry Ruggs is Tyreek Hill. I think someone uh, like Jalen Waddle is similar to Tyreek Hill because they're faster and they're quicker to change of direction. They're quicker zero to 100 speed. Um, I appreciate the super chat, Stephen. I really do. Uh, Jim Bean left a $10 super chat. Uh, he said, just showing support. Congratulations on getting married. Donation. I appreciate the uh, super chat, Jim, Jim Bean. I really do. Um, I got married three years ago. Uh, and me and my wife just celebrated our third anniversary five days ago. That's actually why we were on vacation this uh, just a couple days ago. So uh, thank you, Jim. I really appreciate the super chat. I uh, read the tape uh, is here. He said, I think Ruggs is more of Deshaun Jackson without the return production. I totally agree, man. Um, I think Henry Ruggs is that type of player, right? Deshaun Jackson, uh, he's quick, he's fast, but he's not uh, he, for zero to a hundred. It's, it's not there like Tyree kill is right. Huge shout out to you, Raid the Tape. If you guys are not followers of Raid the Tape, go check his channel out. The guy puts out great content. Um, let's just let's just get back into um, uh, let's get into the running backs, man. Uh, Alec Ingold is the Raiders' one and only fullback. Uh, but when it comes to running backs, we have six guys. I want to know who you guys think. Uh, we're only gonna keep three, right? So let me know who you guys keep are going gonna want to keep. Uh, we have Greshek and uh, Trey Ragus, who are the two undrafted guys. We have Theo Riddick, Jalen Rashard, Ken Kenyon Drake, and Josh Jacobs. Um, here's the thing. Everybody knows that Kenyon Drake and Josh Jacobs are 100% going to be on this roster. That means we have one spot left. Uh, some people will say maybe it's Theo Riddick. I don't think so. I think Theo Riddick's going to get cut. I really think he's just a camp body. Um, it's really going to come down to Jalen Rashard versus those two undrafted free agents. Um, and I do think that Jalen Rashard ultimately gets cut. Jalen Rashard is getting paid three and a half million dollars. That's a lot of money, right? On average, our running backs are probably making more money than our offensive linemen. On average, right? Like, you know, you take the total money of the O-line divided by five, take the total money of the running backs and you divide it by three, or it's probably close, right? Uh, either way, I think it's very interesting that we brought in two undrafted guys. If the Raiders are confident in Jalen Rashard, they'd only keep four guys. There, there would be no need to bring in undrafted free agents. Uh, I feel like at this point, the Raiders are really thinking about getting rid of someone like Jalen Rashard. Um, do you guys think it makes sense to get rid of Rashard? He's done so many great things for the Raiders. Um, the thing that I love about Rashard is he knows his blocking assignments. There's so many times where guys blitz uh, from the defensive side, right? Linebackers or safeties come off the edge. And Jalen Rashard is 10 times the blocker that Josh Jacobs is. And you can't underestimate the blocking, right? Uh, blocking is, is, for John Gruden especially, blocking is the most important thing that a running back has to do. Uh, if you can't block, John Gruden's not going to want you around. Uh, I was reading an article about uh, Lynn Bowden Jr. just this morning. Uh, and Lynn Bowden was talking about how John Gruden expected him to block a ton, right? Block 350 pound linemen or, or something to that tune. Um, and Lynn Bowden was kind of complaining about it, right? That he had to block. If you're complaining about blocking in John Gruden's system, you're going to get cut. And I think that was one of the reasons why Lynn Bowden is no longer with the Raiders, right? John Gruden wants someone that can block. And I believe Richard has been here we know that DeAndre Washington was a better running back than Jalen Rashard, but Jalen Rashard brought that third down ability to block. Uh, he made plays out of the backfield, catching the football, 
And at the same time, Josh Jacobs has never developed the ability to catch out of the backfield, which is crazy because at Alabama, that's kind of what he did. He lined up and played wide receiver. He lined up in the slot. Uh, he caught passes out of the backfield. And he never did that for the Raiders, or he really hasn't had a consistent basis. Josh Jacobs is really a, a in-between-the-tackles type of running back. He's a, a power back. Uh, he doesn't have the, the, the biggest speed, right? Um so it is going to be interesting to kind of see. I do think that uh, Groshek, who is from, uh, I believe, Wisconsin, um, I do think he's going to be the running back to replace Jalen Richard. I watched his film, and one of the things that I saw over and over and over again was third downs. Jonathan Taylor was coming out of the game, and Groshek was, was in there, and he was making catches. They were throwing him screenplays. Uh, he was picking up blitzes. And he did it at a really good level. At the same time, Trey Ragus, uh, I think he played at a lower college. I think Louisiana Tech is where he played. Uh, he didn't do great, in my opinion, when it came to like picking up blocks and stuff like that. Um, but he is a good runner, right? And I don't know how much the writers are going to value that as opposed to blocking, you know, pass blocking specifically. Uh, again, it'll be interesting to kind of see, but I do think this is Jalen Richard's final season with the Raiders, or I should say final camp with the Raiders. Ultimately, Three and a half million dollars is a lot of money to save, right? Uh, the Raiders have about five, six million dollars right now in cap. You add that three and a half million dollars, you have nine million dollars, right? You restructure one or two guys or you push their cap into next season. You have enough money for Julio Jones, right? We only need like 13, 14 million dollars to get Julio Jones. So uh let's let's get into some super chats. Again, I really want to know what you guys think. Give me your three running backs if you think three running backs make the roster. If you guys think it's four. Uh, let me know who the four are that you guys think make the roster. Is Jalen Richard the guy? If not, let me know who uh, who replaces him. Um, I want to give a huge shout-out to 808 Raiders, up to $5 Super Chat. You said extend Carr so we can sign players to put us over the top for the playoffs. Uh, and I agree with you, man. If if John Gruden's 100% sold that Derek Carr is the guy, then I'm all for it. Let's extend Derek Carr. Now, some people have said that that saves us cap. I'm not 100% sure how that works uh, because he's only getting $20 million right now. So I don't know how us extending Derek uh, saves us money in the long run. So if someone can explain that to me, that'd be great. Uh, but I do think the Raiders still need one more player. On the offense side, the ball, specifically wide receiver, if it's not Julio Jones, trade for Devontae Adams, right? And I know Devontae Adams, it's highly unlikely the Packers are going to trade him. Uh, but we could have had DeAndre Hopkins last year. Like that would have made our offense so much more explosive. Uh, and I am the type of person that does not think wide receiver is that important of a position because you can win without one, right? You see uh, the Patriots win every single year without a wide receiver. Um, but at the same time, you look at the Buccaneers and the Chiefs and they're winning with the wide receiver and it makes it look that much better in my opinion. So uh, I, I do agree with you on that 808 Raiders. Huge shout out to you for the super chat. Uh, Ryan Campbell said Snead is an X factor that folks are sleeping on. Um, I don't know uh, if I 100% agree with that. Um, maybe uh, Willie Snead could be an X factor. He did play good at times for the Ravens. And you got to always keep in mind the Ravens system is a run for a system, and it's a different type of run for a system than what the Raiders have, right? Uh, the Ravens' run for a system is run the ball, uh, and then quarterback keeps the ball on an option play. Maybe you run a rat run pass option. Even when the quarterback lines up to actually throw the football, uh, their quarterback is not as good of a passer as Derek Carr is, right? So that hinders the receivers even more. Uh, now, I will say that obviously Lamar Jackson is a better overall co quarterback than Derek Carr, but he is not a better thrower of the football than Derek Carr. I'm sure most of us can agree with that. Um, and I do think that hinders Willie Sneed. Now, will he be an X factor? I don't know, man. Let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think Willie Sneed will be an X factor or do you think Willie Sneed will be cut? Uh, personally, I think he'll make the roster. I don't know if he'll be an X factor. Uh, if I had to make, you know, if I had to uh, say which player will have a bigger impact, between Willie Sneed and John Brown, I do think Willie Sneed has the bigger impact. I don't know. There's just something about Sneed that, to me, tells me he's going to end up getting more playing time uh, than John Brown, right? I think John Brown is who he is. A lot of people think John Brown and Nelson Aguilar are the same type of player coming into the Raiders, and they'll have the same impact, and that's not true at all. Uh, John Brown and, Willie, and Nelson Aguilar are not the same players. 
and they're not even going to have the same impact. I think Nelson Aguilar, there are zero expectations for him. And when he came to the Raiders and he balled out, we're all pumped up about it. But if you expect John Brown to have that same impact, uh, your hopes are too high of him, in my personal opinion. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Um, again, I appreciate all of the um, I appreciate all of the uh, comments. I'm seeing a ton of comments from you guys. Um, I I do appreciate all of them. Uh, let's let's get right back into the running back situation. I see a lot of you guys saying that um, you guys think Jalen Rashard is going to be cut, and I agree with all of you guys, man. If you guys can hit that thumbs up button, it really does help me a ton. So I really appreciate that. It just takes a second to hit that thumbs up button. Um, I see all the comments, so I do appreciate it. So shout out to all of you guys that are here with me right now. Um, I want to get into the final topic, and that is the quarterbacks. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to kind of see what Derek Carr does this season. Now, first and foremost, we have three quarterbacks on the roster. We have Derek Carr as our number one quarterback. Marcus Mariota as our number two quarterback. And lastly, we have Nathan Peterman. Uh, I think those are going to be the three quarterbacks going into this season. I, I don't think we're going to uh, cut any of those guys. I don't think we're going to trade for anybody else. I, I don't think anything's going to happen outside of those three guys being the Raiders quarterbacks. And of course, Derek Carr starts. Um, what's going to be interesting this year, um, it's going to be very interesting to kind of see when Derek Carr is is playing behind the O-line this season as opposed to last season. Um, our pass blocking, even though it wasn't great last season, it was better last season than it will be this season because the Raiders do have uh, two new guys. We have a new center and we have a new right tackle. Um, now, I know we ultimately had, didn't really have Trent Brown the whole entire year, right? I think we had five games. So the other 11 games, we had guys like Brandon Parker, Sam Young, Denzel Good for one or two weeks uh, playing right tackle. Um so with that, we really, you know, didn't have a true starting right tackle. But this year is a little bit different because Alex Leatherwood's a rookie. Rookies don't typically have great seasons, right? I know Tristan Werps had a great year for the Buccaneers last year. Um, and I know some people are, are kind of comparing the fact that the Buccaneers got a tackle in the first and the Raiders got a tackle in the first to the same thing. Um, but look at the Giants. The Giants took Andrew Thomas last year and he struggled. You look at the Cleveland Browns taking offense tackle and, and him having points in his career, uh, career where he struggled. Guys don't always have great starts to their careers. Now, um, if Derek Carr gets sacked, you know, twice as much as last year, gets hit twice as much as last year, what's going to happen to Derek? Like, ultimately, is he going to, you know, is is that going to have hinder our offense? Are we going to go from having the 10th best offense and being pushed back to maybe like the 16th best offense? Um, at the same time, what happens if we don't score as many points? Like, are we going to win six games next year? Um, again, I think this is one of the reasons why the Raiders need to go get a guy like Julio Jones. Um, if your O-line is not able to protect your quarterback, the way to combat that is by getting the ball out quickly, uh, being able to throw passes quickly. But the issue with that is you have to have receivers that can get open quickly, right? Third and three, uh, let's say it, it, it's an all-out blitz. Let's say it's a cover one. You got two guys coming, um, seven guys in total blitzing from the defensive side of the ball. Imagine if all guys are being pressed, and then let's just say they they bracket Darren Waller, and you have to rely on Henry Ruggs, Hunter Renfro, or John Brown, or, or one of our other tight ends, one of these guys to get open. You get one and a half to two seconds max before you get pressured. Are those guys going to get open? Because last year they did not get open. Last year those guys struggled when they're all pressed and we and, and the defense ultimately blitzed. it. Uh, we struggled. And unless we have a guy like Julio Jones, we're going to struggle again this year. Uh, so that's why I believe it's going to be very, very important for the Raiders to go out and get a true guy like Julio. Chances are we're not going to get Julio, right? Uh, there's a high chance we won't. Um, but – if Derek's being pressured and he needs to throw the ball quickly, we need guys that can beat the guy lined up across from him. And I don't know if we have that right now. Uh, so what do you guys think? If Derek Carr is pressured more, is he going to be able to have success? Is he going to take a step back? At the same time, are we going to have, outside of our five offense linemen, are we going to have to have Foster Moreau block longer? Are we going to have Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake uh, stay in the backfield longer. What's going to happen in, with that quarterback situation? Um, 
And at the same time, do you guys think the Raiders need to run more packages for someone like Marcus Mariota? Uh, you know, a lot of people have brought this to my attention saying that, hey, why does John Gruden not give Marcus Mariota the ball more? Why not run read options with him more? Uh, the issue with running more of those type of plays with Marcus Mariota, uh, and, and again, people always make the comparison to Taysom Hill. Marcus Mariota is not Taysom Hill. Those are two completely different players. I know Taysom Hill played quarterback for probably most of his career. I'm not 100% sure if he was a quarterback in college. I believe he was. Um, but Taysom Hill today is more of a tight end. He's more of a special teams ace type of player. Taysom Hill is not a true quarterback. He's not a guy that's going to line up and throw the ball 30 times a game. On the other end, Marcus Mariota will line up 30 times a game and, and throw the ball. And I say that because Taysom Hill will lower his shoulder into a linebacker. He'll lower his shoulder into a into a uh, safety. Uh, he'll take contact on, and that's not what Marcus Mariota is going to do. So if you guys think about it from that perspective, if Mariota does run the read option, and let's say he keeps the ball and a safety steps up, Mariota's not going to take a hit, and he's not going to try breaking that tackle. So ultimately, we might only get two yards because that's, the, that's as close as the guy gets. Um, and then even then, if you want to keep a defense honest and you want to throw the ball, unless you're letting Marcus Mariota throw the ball 10 times a game, he's not going to get in rhythm. You can't expect him to come in and just make one pass and then not throw another pass because that one pass could be an interception or it could be an ugly throw, right? Um, either way, it's going to be very interesting to kind of see what the Raiders do with their quarterbacks. Ultimately, I think the three guys that are on the roster are going to be the Raiders quarterbacks. I think – Derek's going to start. I think Marcus Mariota will back him up. Uh, do you guys think if Derek struggles, do you guys think Marcus comes in at all during this season? Um, at the same time, if the O-line struggles, do you think Derek Carr is going to take a step back? Um, if the O-line does good, do you guys think Derek Carr can have an MVP caliber year? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to leave you guys with a lot of questions, and I really want to know what you guys think about all of our depth positions, quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, tight ends. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. A uh, huge shout out to Dirty Styles for leaving a $2 super chat. I really appreciate you. You're saying you're the best and my favorite YouTuber. I really appreciate it. I do put a ton of uh, I do put a ton of time into my content. Uh, I spend a lot of time and I spend hours and hours and hours making videos. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. Again, I appreciate every single one of you guys. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button before you guys leave. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your long weekend. Enjoy the Memorial Day tomorrow. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.